Hello and welcome. Here we're going to be looking at using the OneDrive software on a Mac. So we're going to log into the Mac. We're going to show you how to configure the OneDrive, get it uh, organized so you can have your documents and pictures automatically syncing up to your OneDrive storage and then obviously accessing that. We're also going to sync the Teams files that we have down from a particular team onto the Mac as well. And then we're going to do some maintenance, show you how to clean that up. If you don't want to sync anymore, you can then um, turn that off and how to change those settings inside OneDrive, basically how to control the whole OneDrive environment. So let's kick it off and log in as our user. This uh, one we normally use, Buck Rogers at Cozy Mouse. Let's log him in and check it out. In there, the password. And you can see this is a very uh, standard build. It's actually a brand new build for, for Buck. And he's just got his new Mac and he wants to set things up. Excuse the little lag here. You can see I'm obviously remote controlling this machine. So you'll see like a double pointer. So excuse that. But if we go to Finder, you can see he has nothing set up here, nothing on the desktop or documents. As I say, it's a nice clean install. He does have his Outlook installed and that's running. If we go to uh, applications here, let's see if we go to Outlook, that's running. And also we have uh, Teams running as well. So you can see there's our Teams set up. All good to go. And give that a second. The Outlook should start as well. There we are. And you can see his, his Outlook is configured too. Oh, look at that. We can just have a light one. Actually, we'll finish that later. Well, don't worry about that. As you can see, though, it's, it is actually a brand new, uh, brand new setup. So let's go into the portal. Now, if we log in here through the normal portal.office.com. We should be able to log in as Buck. Here we go. It's password. So this will be very familiar to, to people that have used the, the standard Microsoft 365 environment before. You can see here we are again in the normal portal and you can see he's got access to all the applications through the portal and obviously into the, the OneDrive, which is obviously what we want to be talking about here. But that's just the OneDrive. You've seen that before on the Windows side. This is exactly the same on the Mac side, and you can go in and edit those files and do whatever you need with the web versions. So let's just come out of there. Now, if you want to download that version for the, the Mac, one of the easiest ways to do it is just in the in the App Store. Go in there, just key in OneDrive, and you'll find it will pop up. So, and there's our OneDrive. You can see we've already installed it on this one, so we just get to, to open it. Now, if we have installed it, we would do it through the, the obviously Finder applications, and you'll find there is OneDrive. Let's just go down a little bit, and there's our OneDrive. So the first time into OneDrive, it's going to be asking us to, to sign in. So here, and it knows, obviously, because we've already been into uh, with the Outlook setup and, and the portal setup, it's going to pre-populate this with the, uh, the Microsoft 365 account. Otherwise, you would just be typing that in. So then you hit Sign In. Give us the, the normal Microsoft prompt. Now, as I say, because we've already signed into the portal, it's not asking us for a password. So it's a one time thing. You can see all these things are now linked, which is obviously perfect. But really, we're just signing into OneDrive here and we'll just say we want to choose the folder location. Now, this is the location on your machine that the OneDrive is going to uh, use. So if you've got a very small Mac, let's say it's like a a 128 gig version. You might not want to have OneDrive on that. You might have an external drive that you've always got plugged in, like a, like a little terabyte SSD or something. Either way, you can tell it whereabouts you want to have the location of your OneDrive folder on the Mac. So in this case, I'm just going to say the normal uh, directory here, which is the Buck Rogers one. You can see it'll come up here. It's going to create an extra folder here called OneDrive, but we're just going to choose that. That is the default setting. So um, you can just go and choose that one. And you can see here it's saying, Users, Buck Rogers, and then OneDrive for Cozy Mouse. So that's uh, that's where we want that to live. But let's do the next, and I'll show you how that then appears in the the folder area. Let's hit next on that. And thank you for a quick tutorial. All good. I'm going to run through those, and we'll say yes later for that. Open OneDrive folder. There we go. So what you can see here is, if I make that a bit bigger, you can see locations here. OneDrive. There is all of the uh, the OneDrive components you can see from here. I just go aside a little bit and actually we just go into documents here. We should see and uh, there we are some test files and we should see that uh, there it is. Buck's call file there, which is that one listed there. Now you notice how it's uh, got the little cloud icon here. So that's the same as what we're used to. 
if we want to have this folder uh, downloaded to the machine permanently so like for offline access what you can do is just right click it there and you can say always keep on this device when you're done with it you can say free up space as well but if we say always keep on this device you'll see that will then change that logo give it a second there we go and let's change and see the tick there i might want to change the uh, just the layout a little bit let's say we want to uh, make it as a list and then you can see here there's a little icon change so these are showing that these are not on the machine they're available to use obviously but it will download them when it wants to use them and you can see test folder one is on this machine so if i were to go into here into test folder one see that's got nothing in it we need to do it with the test files isn't it so if we do that and you'll see under test files that's where that little file box call file is and you can see that that little logo is there as well and you can see this one is uh, that means it's actually shared with somebody too so that's okay you can see obviously getting OneDrive on the machine is quite a simple as signing into the OneDrive and then seeing what you have here and making those decisions about what you want to have downloaded I want to show you some more settings in here so it becomes a little bit more manageable and up in the top right hand corner here you can see there's the, the OneDrive and if you click on the little uh, settings and go to preferences now you can start to see a bit more about how OneDrive is going to behave on your machine so you've got the uh, the files on demand which is what I was talking about before about having things synced uh, to your machine or downloaded completely or just available when you want to use them you can say I want to download all of my OneDrive files right now and it will just get them bang onto your machine in one go which is sometimes a useful thing but you can see here it's asking what do you want to do open login that's that is an important uh, uh, one to have that's really good but if you look at account here you can see the 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 OneDrive cozy mouse that's the one location is syncing now this is the one that's going to show up a bit more when we go into things like the teams and start bringing files down so let's go ahead and do that the the other items really are just talking about uh networking limits and then obviously the about so there's not much really in those two it's the account one which is the important one so let's just close that i want to show you what happens when you go into into teams and bring those files down so let's go into teams here and you can see there are our block of teams and under general you'd know if you've seen the other videos we've got things in files here and you can see we've got under general the boarding and then that little demo now let's suppose that we want to sync those to the local machine so it's easier for us to work on them and then obviously they, they sync back automatically teams when we when we uh, make changes to them and they're obviously available to everybody else it's a shared location and it's just sometimes easier to get that downloaded to the machine now you can see the sync icon is actually missing and that's because it's not quite wide enough so if we bring that a bit wider now you can see there it is it is available in this little dots the, the ones that aren't there are there so you can see we can do that but now we've got OneDrive set up all I need to do is just hit the sync button you can see what it would do is is it just flashes up very quickly that it wants to make that change in OneDrive now that's all we need to do let's go into the finder and see what it's done so we jump into finder there now look at this here we've got two of these now if you just make that a little bit bigger you can see let me just drag that across like that so we can see it all and once again there we go let's have a look at the shared libraries here and you can see it comes up as one link it doesn't give you hundreds of them it will say now we've got cozy mouse general and there is the onboarding and there's the uh block of files that we wanted to have so they're now on the machine very accessible once again they're cloud only at the moment I could quite easily just right click this and say always keep on this device be aware of the space it would take up so just just be careful when you do that sort of thing that it's not going to blow out the space for you uh, you might want to just do single directories or single documents rather than the whole area in this case I know it's quite small so I'm just going to say always keep and you can see now it's do a sync process and bring those down for us and have those available now if I go back to my OneDrive settings here and look here Go to preferences again you'll see if we go to the account block there's now two and you can see here's our cozy mouse general and that will start to grow as you start syncing more and more things to it so if we were to go into uh, let's say our little test team here and files i don't think there's really anything in there but um, i mean we can just create one very quickly so there we go just a quick test file but if we hit sync on that one now what it will do for us so yep that's good is if we go back to finder what you'll see yeah look at that we've got the uh, test team three general there's our test file just coming very quickly it's all under this one section of the shared libraries for cozy mouse but you can see what it's doing it's creating this structure for us so we can access them quite easily 
And if you do go into that preferences again, let's say into here, you'll see under account, it's now got these extra ones here. So if I just drag that down a little bit, because if we decide we're done with this one now and we want to just remove it from the machine, all we need to do is just say stop sync. And that will go away and we say stop syncing and you'll see it will disappear. There it is. Uh, so it doesn't mean the files are uh, deleted, obviously. They're, they're still in the uh, in the team section. It just means we're not syncing them down to the, the machine. We can still access them through Teams and get into them that way, but it's, uh, it's just removed from here, obviously. Now, this works for SharePoint sites as well. So remember this link we had sent from Bob to a SharePoint site. I'm just going to take that link and I'm going to paste it up into here and there's our SharePoint site and I know that under resources there is a documents page and that's where everything is kept so quite easily now I can do the same thing with OneDrive I can grab this current project so I want to work on that one offline and and I can sync what we actually need to do with the the SharePoint site though is we actually have to sync the entire documents folder we can't go in here unless we actually go in and go into the folder itself so that's one thing you need to know you can't go here and select it because the sync option disappears what you need to do is you can only sync things at this top level here so now the sync button is there I could sync all the documents if I want to sync just current projects I've got to go in there and then I can press the sync button and you can see there that's good I've got one drive great and that will then take that and you can see it's dropped in there staff central current projects and we just pop that one out hit close and if I go back to finder you'll see there it is and there's our current projects and things that are happening and once again if I go back to the, uh, the OneDrive here that account you can see obviously we just saw that before but it popped in here and I can choose the stop sync if I want to be able to turn that off so we just hit stop sync and stop syncing and that will then disappear from there so as you can see it works perfectly well on on uh, SharePoint I do get asked sometimes about this when you when you select it why does it go away it's because you've got to be sharing it in the top level here to have that sync option come alive for you. So let's talk about sharing files. We know how to do it. If you've seen the other video about the portal with, with running OneDrive through the portal, you'll know that obviously in the, these files here, you can go into a file. It's great, use it. But if you want to collaborate on it, uh, we can do the sharing from inside the file. I'm gonna just drop that one out and just go into it from here and say share. And you can see there's our, our share options. And you can see that's the, the link. If you haven't seen this before, it's saying that anybody with a link can edit this file. Now, what we would want to be doing that is saying we don't want to change that. I want to say only people I choose have access to the file and then apply that. What it will do then is saying, OK, I have to put this in. So I'm going to key in Bob Jones. As you can see here and give him a message if I need to. But once I do these things here, remember that if we do copy link or send, the send will obviously send him a message and send him the link or we can say copy link. As soon as I do that, that link and that sharing of that file is now live. There's no uh, stop button here. You only can cancel it if you just hit the, the close button here. So as soon as I say copy link, copies it to the clipboard. I've now got a live link. I don't need to send it for it to be live. Sorry for going over that too much, but it just means here these two buttons are like an OK button for the whole thing which is why you want to be doing the specified people um, that can edit the file. Do that first before you go and say copy link. So I'm going to close that because I'm going to do it through the, the OneDrive itself on the Mac. So what you can do, you can go into Finder and we can say go into our normal documents area. Let's say we've got this sales forecast and I can share that file. What I can do here is go down here and you can see it's linked up as one of these actions. We can now say share and you get a very, very similar Menu uh, from here, same thing. Anyone the link can edit, I would say people you choose. And you can then say for this particular link I'm creating, I might say they can only view. And I want to be able to block the download so they can't download it and apply those settings. And then I'll put in the details of the person. So here you can see this is me, this is the external one. And you can see here it's outside of your organization. It's going to give you that warning if that is the case. So I would then say, I could say, Copy the link and that's done. I can then close that. What I might do then is I might just drop into Outlook and I'll start a new message. And as you can see there, I would be pasting that link in and you can see that will come up like so. And it will then flick over and become a nice looking one. So now this link I would send to 
watch it myself on there. Put it something like that. And uh, yeah, I'll click with that. Let's say send. And then off it goes. And there's the link done. Now, if I want to come back to that and manage that a bit later on, uh, what I can do here is you can see here it's got this little icon to say it is shared with people. What I do is just go in here and just do manage access. And when I do that, you can see there is a list of all the people. Uh, these are the people that have got access to it directly off the organization because you won't see external people in this list. Just remember that you can't see externals here. You have to see them from the links. And you can see these are the links for external. Um, and you can see here's the one to save you. And if I drop that down, you can see there's my external user. So um, so just because you don't see the external user here doesn't mean it's not shared with them. Do have a look at this links as well, because that will give you the the, um, the, the more full list on, on how that is shared out. And quite easily now I can just go bang, stop sharing, and that will take that away from everybody. The links are obviously still out there on people's emails, but the links just plainly won't work. So. Uh, that's something to bear in mind that if you want to sh stop sharing very quickly, just hit bang and that will just kill it off for everybody. And then you can obviously give it back as you need to. Now that manage access and that always works at the uh, directory level as well. I could do the, the access from here, test files, and I can say share and I can share the entire folder as well. So it doesn't just work on files. It works on folders and structures, obviously, as well. If you do that and give access to test files, anything you put in that directory, after that is going to be accessible on that share. So if you start filling it up with things, those people, whether they're external or internal, are going to have access to the entire folder structure. So um, once again, be careful with that. But it is something you can do if you've got a, a collaborative file, you're collecting information from people say, hey, chuck all your documentation in here. Great. Share the directory, collect that from people. And that's a great way to to collect information and collect files from people. But like I say, just be be aware everybody's going to have access into that area if you share the entire directory. So I think that gives uh, gives you a good understanding of how OneDrive works on the Mac. Remember this one here as well, unlink this Mac. If you actually want to just unlink it completely and get rid of OneDrive with that log on totally off that Mac, there's your option to use unlink this Mac and it will get rid of everything for you. That's kind of like a full sign out, get rid of everything section and that will do that for you but otherwise um, thank you very much for watching and and i do hope you enjoy using onedrive on your mac so have a good day and we'll see you on the next training video thanks again